Well, um, it's all your fault, Ian. I blame you, but I thank you too. Because you're my first video comment uh, and my first video. And um, you have inspired me to respond because what you're talking about, uh, um, I appreciate and um, uh, maybe I understand some of it. Uh, in regards to uh, color and light, uh, well, if you didn't say color, but I did a study on color, light, and sound. And it's interesting to note that we can see, and, and a lot of emphasis is made on visual things. And uh, music, of course, a lot of people appreciate. But uh, on the one hand, with music, you can hear a whole range of frequencies. And like when you were speaking about the whole universe and we're perceiving segments or snapshots from a purely scientific uh, aspect, we see a very narrow, with our eyes, we see a very narrow spectrum of the electromagnetic spectrum in which they found that light is electromagnetic waves so that means it's radio waves it's the radio waves and it goes from but we see only a very narrow spectrum now in my study I was correlating uh, in a magical uh, something or other where they uh, it was related to the golden dawn and so on that they had uh, there was correlation in music and light and sound and so on and that um, the colors were related to the notes and the scale of music and you, it's interesting to note that we have um, seven uh, do re mi fa sol la ti do well uh, Newton um, who broke down light into its basic colors uh, of seven although it has been suggested that he picked seven different colors, red, green, blue, the, six, the three primaries, three secondaries, that's six, and the seventh, I believe it's indigo, purple. So anyway, um, the colors and everything, from my studies, what I found out, what it was interesting was, is that we see approximately one octave of light. And the significance of that, I think, is that when you consider what is an octave in music, uh, you go the note C, do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, ti, do. There's a do to a do, and that is an octave. An octave is doubling of the frequency. So the C above middle C is twice the frequency. The C above that is twice that frequency, which means it's four times the frequency of the C there. So anyway, it goes up in a doubling, doubling effect. So anyway, but when there have been correlations to the specific frequencies and the specific tones, so that the color of red was supposed to have been associated with uh, the note C, which is around 250 three hertz or something like that. Well, A is 440. And anyway, so, however, I found that it was in the key of uh, F sharp, or you could closely relate it to the key of G musically. But uh, as I found it, it was very interesting that what we perceive is one octave. And why? Well, I made a guess is that if we saw more than an octave, we would have a kind of a blurry vision because of the rods and receptors are being fired upon and uh, if they hear, if we hear two tones, we can distinguish them. But our eyes, for some reason, if we were to see two images, uh, one's doubling that frequency and so it's, so it'd be a kind of a hazy, that's my impression. Anyway, but we see this narrow spectrum. And I also have thought that it's interesting that we, as an organism, comprehend much of our universe. 
And much of what we comprehend of our universe, the origins and how the planets and what the gases and elements are on different places, is based upon light and spectroscopy as far as an analysis of the emissions and jumping of the electrons from the higher levels to the lower levels, that energy release releases light in a particular frequency. And that particular frequency is a characteristic of the element. So we perceive all this stuff. And uh, it's necessary that we have that perception in that range and everything. Of course, we have now telescopes and mechanical instruments that will translate the images like infrared light, and, you know, seen in the dark. Well, we don't see because our eyes can't perceive that range. So anyway, uh, let me get down to uh, the thing about when you say what we want to perceive. Now this leads me to my current, I guess, religious or spiritual belief. And it's kind of a humorous one in a way, uh, at least I think sometimes. And that is that we are perceiving what we perceive because we want to perceive it. Uh, to put it another way, Conversations with God has this, or at least my, I follow their belief closest, and it says that we are all one. We are God. Not that we're his little toe or his big finger or whatever, but we are God. And that there is no right and wrong going on. Uh, why somebody does whatever, uh, because we want to experience it. We want to experience life. We want to experience death. We want to experience joy. And we also want to experience sorrow. You may think, oh, no, I don't want to do that. But why do people go on rides? at the carnival or go to scary shows and get terrified. They like that, apparently. You see, that's my point there. So anyway, Ian, I thank you for breaking my mold of procrastinating and having to have everything perfect before I will do a task. As you can see, I'm going to make you look good. So I'll probably get a lot of the comments. You know, I did a good job of looking terrible. Thank you. That's it.